Oh, heck yeah, a leaf? Finders keepers? We Dandori today. So we can Dandori tomorrow. So we can Dandori as many times as it takes to beat Pikmin 4 in the minimum amount of days possible while 100%ing all areas. <laughs> that's it, that's the intro. After saving Colin and Shepard, the game opens up a bit and we can get the red onion. This gives us a single red Pikmin, but don't pick this man just yet. Time doesn't pass while we're in this hub area. We can take advantage of that right away with a niche mechanic where Pikmin sprout flowers after being in the ground for 4 minutes. Or not, it doesn't work literally just on the first day for some reason, I, I don't know. The next best thing we can do is pluck exactly the amount we need to progress to the next day. That means we pluck 7 so they can be thrown up a ledge and carry the heaviest object, the 10 weight Game Boy, along with Ochi's 3 strength. Another advantage to time not moving in the hub area is that we can get the 6 pellets there that respawn every day for 12 free Pikmin. We can actually wait for them to bloom into flower Pikmin each day now, which will double their speed, making them much more efficient at tasks, which is good. This will give us 25 red Pikmin, with 18 of them being flower Pikmin once we enter Sunspeckled Terrace. We won't have to worry about raw materials thanks to an infinite farming trick we'll use tomorrow, but we do need at least 104 before then, so it's worth throwing our 20 Pikmin at the stack of 20 as we go by. We only need Ochi to rush into the dirt wall twice to get past it and enter our first cave. These will be crucial for this challenge. Just entering them already showcases one of their many uses, in that Pikmin not currently in your party will stop whatever they're doing or not doing and enter with you so there's no downtime running back to whistle them after they turn in treasures, or in this case, raw materials. No matter which Pikmin we're out at the time, we can still select which Pikmin we want to use in the cave. Time also moves 6 times slower in caves than on the surface. As nice as this is, we'll still be playing as efficiently as possible, obviously. This also lets us complete more caves in a day than we would be able to otherwise. And we'll see another big reason this is so useful later in the day. To be able to plan and play as efficiently as possible, we'll be taking full advantage of the rewind feature. This will usually only give us the option to rewind back to the start of our previous checkpoint, which is typically the start of the day, start of the current sublevel, or right after you exit a cave. Not only can this fix Dandori issues, it also changes the game's RNG without costing any in-game time. This comes up more often than you might expect, as something as simple as a snowy blowhog has a chance to blow a chilling wind or thrash any Pikmin attacking him off of him. This gets rid of flowers and simply takes more time to whistle the Pikmin back to throw them again. So we reset for RNG where he uses his other attack and gets defeated before he has another chance to move. We're also introduced to Ice Pikmin here, who help a lot in early game fights where Ochi is weaker and we don't have a lot of Pikmin to beat enemies before they shake them off. While we wait for everything to be turned into the ship, we can throw our new friends at Nectar so they bloom. Once everything's in, we can exit the cave from the menu instead of the wind thingy at the end of caves to save time. Before moving on, we'll enter the cave four more times just to kill the snowy blowhog so we can whistle the five ice pikmin each time for 30 total. On the final excursion, I was rewinding time until a frozen sheer grub dropped an ultra spicy spray we'll use later today. Otherwise, I threw reds at them so I could make my way to the ice pikmin as quickly as possible. After that, we'll run to the next cave while making sure to do things like knock the temporal mechanism down and move the bag as we naturally pass by them. The only interesting things to note here are that we avoid fighting enemies if they won't interfere with Pikmin carrying things. 
We also whistle our yellow Pikmin we just found after their increased throwing height pulls the dusty bed down and have reds carry it instead so they can start destroying the electric gate as soon as possible. Our primary goal today is to collect everything we possibly can before Ochi grows, so we'll backtrack a bit now that we have yellow Pikmin, while four of them destroy the electric gate blocking our way. I run back to the temporal mechanism, making sure to have about five extra Pikmin carry it to turn it in faster. I throw five up to the Farlick and kill some enemies that interfere with the route my Pikmin take to the ship. I make my way back after another 5 yellow Pikmin reach an aspirational ritual bowl to throw some Pikmin at the Farlick to speed it up, and decide to use my only ultra spicy spray to dramatically speed this process up even more, as I make my way back to the cave I just exited after everything's turned in. All I want to do here is exit as soon as I enter to get my now 30 Pikmin back. We'll kill the three red Bulborbs on our way, as well as some other smaller enemies to open up another area to move our ship, while we turn in all other available treasure and the yellow onion on this side of the map there, since it's much closer. That just leaves the double dragon-eyed scope, which we can fall down from where we fought the last red Bulborb to quickly throw Pikmin at, while we fight a fiery blowhog to unlock and switch base locations to the middle of the map for a closer turn in, and so we can start tomorrow in this spot. We've officially finished everything we need to do today with half of the day left, but we're nowhere near done. In fact, I get the great honor of spending another 8 hours just on this day. Woo! That's because any time not needed working towards 100% completing an area will be spent grinding in some way. What we grind will change depending on factors like what we need and what caves we have access to since time moves slower in them. The thing we have access to that will help us the most throughout the entire challenge is Ultra Spicy Spray, since it speeds up Ochi and the Pikmin while also blooming their flowers. My original idea was to grind it by having Ice Pikmin freeze and kill the six Shear Grubs and rewind until I got at least one Ultra Spicy Spray. Then exit the cave and re-enter to repeat this process until the day ends. I thought this might give me some instances where I could get multiple to drop, but I didn't realize just how rarely these enemies drop Ultra Spicy Spray instead of Nectar, so after spending 20 minutes without a single drop, I had to spend some in-game time running to my backup option of Crackling Cauldron sub-level 2. Whoops. This has two eggs right next to where you drop. We'll simply be destroying both, and once again rewind if we don't get Ultra Spicy Spray, which is most of the time, and leave and re-enter if we do. This really did take 7-8 to eight tedious hours, and for fun I counted how many times 2 Ultra Spicy Sprays dropped, which was a grand total of 5. <laughs> I don't hate myself quite enough to reset for double drops, but you could theoretically end with more than double the Ultra Spicy Spray I got if you also don't waste some time running to the right cave. I still ended with 228 Ultra Spicy Spray, which is a lot and almost enough to have it up at all times, including in caves. Unfortunately, this does mean I'll have to be a little selective of when I use it. Nah, just fooling. We'll grind more and spam it constantly. Sometimes I even use it before it runs out, since it interrupts actions like charging Ochi's rush when you activate it. The last important thing we'll be taking advantage of every day is the 9 really long seconds countdown before the day is forced to end. You can't enter caves during it, but an interesting byproduct of this is that the day can't end while you're in a cave, and will instead essentially stop the timer right before the countdown is supposed to start. For now, this just means whatever cave we're grinding on can have us enter the first sublevel right before the countdown starts to grind everything on all sublevels, like Sparklium, Ultra Spicy Spray, and Raw Materials. We'll try to save a few things to be completed during the countdown too. In this case, we can pick up some overworld raw material and pellets, making sure Pick can get back to the ship so they don't die, and drown Ochi. So we learned how to swim in two days. I recommend keeping backup saves throughout the day in case something goes wrong, like the timer ending before you drown Ochi. I usually keep two of the three saves to be used as the backup for something going wrong during the expedition, and one backup save in the hub area in case the route doesn't work so I don't softlock myself.
now that Ochi is big and Russ is rescued, we can get some upgrades. The charging horn is straight up broken, so yoink. We'll eventually get all gear, but we still need to build the three bridges before getting more raw materials, so I need to save what I've left for now. The only important Ochi upgrade while we're limited to four points, thanks to four rescues, is two points to upgrade buff to level three, so Ochi can help carry the blue onion, and we don't have to spend any additional days in Sunspeckle Terrace aside from this one. We can start spamming Ultra Spicy Spray now, and even though Ochi can help carry things, he'll be avoiding it whenever possible, since he moves much faster than the captain while this is active, and even though the captain can move separately from Ochi, he won't be doing that until we unlock the Go Here command, and instead jump off of Ochi to use the Charging Horn so we don't have to throw each Pikmin individually. We'll build the two bridges near our base now, thanks to Russ, and once again do the trick where we get our Pikmin back after they finish their tasks by entering and immediately exiting a cave. This opens up the final part of the area where we can dig up the potato and kill creatures on our way to the next cave. This is a special type of cave that you exit from another location than where you entered. If we do our usual strategy of exiting through the menu, will always leave from the side we entered, so for these actually leave the intended way for once. Y you animal. We don't want to move our base here since I moved it near the last bridge for easier access to clay while the last one was being built, and I don't need to push the bag down for 100% completion of an area. Kill the mini boss with just enough ice pikmin to freeze it before it shakes and reds for damage to one cycle it after it shoots once. Then pick up all treasure in this area while running to the bridge. We can start building it as soon as possible with just the four Pikmin we have left while whistling more once they turn things in. Any idle time can be spent switching to more yellow Pikmin for the handle and picking up nearby pellets. Before entering the first Android battle, turn in the pumpkin. Once we exit, select 20 yellow and 20 ice Pikmin. There are at least 5 ice at the leafling and all 20 yellows at the blue onion so I can quickly dig it up and start moving it. Whistle the idle ice pikmin on your way to the Dandori challenge so you have enough to freeze the water and jump over the ledge. Before you start moving, the yellow pikmin will be stuck in a body of water with the blue onion, but that's what we want so we can quickly pick it up later. What's great about this is you actually get 10 raw materials for losing by doing nothing after the 5 minute timer runs out, and we can retry while still in the cave to theoretically get infinite raw materials without any in-game time passing. Don't get your hopes up too much though, since after 5 pity rewards of 10 raw materials, you only get one each time from now on. As funny as the strategy is, I'm trying to get this video out while the game is relatively new to get views as like a bonus challenge, so I'll only spend 4 days pressing A every 5 minutes. Otherwise, I totally would just get like 3,000 raw materials where we're on a different video since that's pretty funny. I'm not lying when I say that I still hear that dang timer running out and my controller shaking even when the console's not on and I'm not doing the challenge. Probably because I grind one raw material for a while and most Andori challenges while taking a break. After the 30 raw material from winning, I end with 645 total, but that's nowhere near enough for the entire game like I was hoping before Nintendo decided to make kids feel even worse after losing 5 times in a row I guess. At least I'll be able to grind more at different points, including later today. First, we'll run back to where the blue onion is so Ochi and the 10 ice pikmen not needed to freeze the water can carry it down. The ice won't melt soon enough if the other ice pikmin speed up the onion once it's fallen. After plucking the first blue pikmin, we can make our way to the next cave we needed Oti's jump to get to. Once it's complete, we head over to the final cave as the second to last treasure gets turned in, and after it's also completed, we can start grinding with half of the day remaining again. We'll grind the second sublevel for the 5 raw material the Tusk Blowhog drops and 7 Spark Theme it provides, as well as the Ice Pikmin that spawn if you only bring reds down here. Although there are 5 total, I only pluck 2-3 to three of them so I can exit and re-enter the cave as soon as everything's turned in. A cool optimization with turning things in is once they start going blue to signify the shrinking animation starting, 
they're legally in, so you can exit the cave as soon as that happens. After my final dive starting in sublevel 1 to take advantage of the countdown trick, I end with 1,109 raw materials, 3,958 sparklium, and 271 ice pikmin. That amount of ice pikmin may seem pointless, but they'll actually be key to getting more pikmin types later. During the countdown, I turn in the last treasures and have my one blue pikmin turn in two pellets with some help from a yellow. There's a common misconception that the color of the pellet determines which type of pikmin it will become, but it's actually which type the majority of pikmin that turned it in was. Also, is it funny to anyone else that I've spent more real life days in this challenge so far than in game days? That uh, stays pretty consistent. Alright, no more of this two days in an area. Crap. The only reason we needed two days for the first area instead of one is that Ochi can't grow until day three, and we needed his jump to get to certain places. The theoretical minimum for all other areas in the game is one day, so that's what we're aiming for from now on. In order to achieve this, we'll primarily need two things. Ultra Spicy Spray, check and Ochi's command level 2, also check now. This gives Ochi and the captain three new commands, but the only important one is go here, and oh boy can we destroy the game with this. It lets us click a part of the map we've been to with a little extra leeway that will make it so exploitable. This is because we can switch to the character we want to use the first go here command on, click on the map to go in the direction of where our end goal is, then switch to the other character to do the same, and by the time we switch back to the first character, we'll usually have more of the map available to press go here again, to basically play as two characters at the same time. It doesn't matter if there are obstacles in the way, where we can press is a consistent radius around both characters, which we can make it so we have one take a long path where the other does something else, which is useful since using go here locks the character into a slightly inefficient path, where they take long awkward turns and they can't perform actions while in this state, like rushing. One last thing to keep in mind is that characters using the go here command will usually take a long path instead of a shortcut that a player would usually take themselves, like how you can fall down this ledge while Pikmin build a bridge to get a treasure faster. I don't want to give the impression that the routes I'll be taking are the only possible ones, but I'm also not going to mention that every time I talk about what I did. So, so fair warning. The route I take in this area prioritizes getting both Farlix as early as possible. While the captain sends enough Pikmin to two-cycle the bridge's construction and saves the rest for securing treasures from some enemies, Ochi takes five yellow and six blue Pikmin to the other side of the map to where the first Farlick is located. After it's dug up, it can be rushed to make it fall down since blue Pikmin otherwise couldn't reach it. The captain will move back to base to pick everyone up after they turn in as Ochi uses his ultra spicy spray enhanced rush to break walls in a single hit. He'll pick up treasure on the way to the bag he can push himself thanks to his 10 strength to let the captain up who switched to yellow pikmin to dig up the second yellow onion. The 20 pikmin repeat onions give are actually pretty good in this challenge since it means we don't have to spend time getting more of that pikmin type. I already mentioned how Ochi's Rush one-shots dirt walls, but with the appropriate color upgrade, he can also one-shot elemental gates like this electric one with Ultra Spicy Spray, which is absolutely insane. I mean, bombs can destroy these quickly too, but that costs raw materials and a little more time. Now, the only thing left that I need to do on this part of the map is complete the secluded courtyard. I'm not going to talk about caves that much, since time moving slower means they don't have to be as optimal, and most sublevels aren't that difficult to optimize to begin with since they're relatively small. This cave did have the second Farlix, so one tick of the clock already has us with both Farlix and a decent chunk of the map cleared. Next, we'll run back to the bridge the Pikmin already built and do the Dandori battle. While the Leafling gets turned in, we'll get rid of some obstacles before jumping into the next cave. After that, we have a long stretch of time before entering another cave, which is the worst situation to be in for this challenge, since not only can we not switch Pikmin as freely, 
but it'll be a while until we reach the next checkpoint. So any mistake you make during these long sections could lose a lot of real life time from having to rewind constantly. We'll pick up a treasure, making sure to move the base before it gets too far by killing the creeping chrysanthemum. Make sure to back up right before it pops out of the ground to not get knocked down, and then rush with ice pikmin and friends. We do still need to get more pikmin when we can, so I've been throwing mostly blues at pellets en route. Then we can start building the bridge and faucet. Once both are done, we can gather our Pikmin to carry the Wayward Moon without having to grind 50 blue Pikmin by now. We can even get a small use out of Idler's Alert so Pikmin that built the faucet can speed up the turn in. I thought this would be more useful, but it turns out we don't have Pikmin idle that much, which I probably should have seen coming now that I'm thinking about it. We can take the newly built bridge to the Dandori challenge by using three bombs to destroy the gate. After winning on my 17th try, we've basically completed half the map before the afternoon, so we're on a good pace. Unfortunately, we do have to spend a bit more time than I'd like running to the next objective after killing a mini-boss for some treasures, including Cupid's grenades we already started moving before entering the challenge. Picking up the harmonic synthesizer will spawn a bunch of metites, so just whistle the ice pikmin so they don't aggro the yellow wally hop nearby, and pick up the unfloatable boat while they despawn to pick it up again. Don't forget the hidden treasure and the buried one will want yellows to dig since this will be turned in last. As soon as that's turned in, have the captain move the base to the final area of the map so Ochi can throw enough pikmin at the wall to build it and rush into the flower. Another cool trick this takes advantage of is idle Pikmin at the ship, getting teleported with it to the new location so the captain can start clearing enemies while the wall gets built. Once we exit the cave on the other side, it will speed up the Mamuda kill with a bomb since it knocks Pikmin off of it. We need some good RNG so Pikmin carrying treasures don't get killed by the Jasmite on their way back to base, but that's nothing some good ol' rewinding can't fix. This just leaves another Dandori challenge and cave left, which we can finish for 100% blossoming Arcadia completion with just over a tick of time remaining. We can use this time to grind a stupid amount of Ultra Spicy Spray, like no one needs this much. We can accomplish this by going to sublevel 2 and disbanding some Pikmin before the small slope and throwing the other type at a bush as 10 mid-height spawn. These ones always drop Ultra Spicy Spray, and I always reset to get at least 9 or 10 each time before leaving. I make sure to whistle the nearby Rock Pikmin so I'll end the day with 100. The only thing I do during the countdown is get some more Blue Pikmin with pellets. And I want to leave this next part unedited, so you can watch the satisfying 0-100% to completion exploration results. So, funny story with Serene Shores, I had to redo it like four times. It's not that my routes were that bad either, they all would have worked if I wasn't grinding 100 white and purple Pikmin. I even had a soul crushing attempt where I softlocked myself by like one second, or if I was a little faster earlier in the day, I would have been able to unearth the blue onion to pick it up after going into the last cave right before the countdown started since that was the last thing I needed to pick up, and white Pikmin would have been fast enough without water in the way. 
But it's fine, haha. <laughs> My first route had the captain and Ochi split up for a long time, where Ochi collected treasures and the captain went all the way up the sandcastle to kill the boss with Ice Pikmin. The advantage to this was being able to farm the Wing Pikmin early, but not only do they take the longest amount of time to farm, with their closest candy pop bulb being pretty far from where you drop, they don't make up for the time you spend farming them at all. The next route I took prioritized White Pikmin since I expect to use them most of the time due to them being much faster than all other types of Pikmin. Throw in some Ultra Spicy Spray and they're, shmo um, th they're shmoovin'. Look em go! While we make our way to the cave with white candy pop bulbs, both characters will be separately collecting items that are too out of the way to collect at any other time. Ochi goes for the chance totems in the corner of the map, while the captain gets the emperor's whistle. Ochi's goal is now to collect all treasure on his way to Sub-Zero Sana, while the captain collects the lower treasure on the sandcastle, and just digs up the full fruit for now, since we need every other Pikmin with Ochi. Ochi will dig up the potted plant with exactly 5 Pikmin to influence carry pathing in the most optimal way, while using the other 27 to kill the aristocrabs, and have 7 pick up the face wrinkler. The other 20 will be used for the Lamp of Inspiration. With the potted plant being dug up in time, these treasures will start being carried towards the base. All that's left to do is have Ochi dig up the cave entrance and the captain move around with zero Pikmin just to give us more areas to use the go here command later. After finishing this cave, we'll be going back until getting 105 white Pikmin. This is where the abundance of ice Pikmin comes into play. Since we'll never need more than 100 of a single type, we can freely convert 100 of them into white Pikmin. But why 105 white Pikmin if I only realistically need 100? Well, I also upgraded Ochi's plucking level to 1 so he can speed up grinding. But it's even better in this cave since if we choose not to bring blue Pikmin, 5 will spawn on the sub level. So we can grind white Pikmin and blue Pikmin at the same time. I counted it to where I'd have exactly 170 blue Pikmin later if I turn in some enemies on the surface, since we'll need that many later. The first time I did this route, I got all 170 here, and you saw how that went last time. But why 170 blue Pikmin? Oh, I don't know, why don't you watch the dang video and find out, huh? Sorry, it's a, it's a surprise tool for later. Now that we have white Pikmin, we'll be using them for their speed pretty much whenever we can get away with not needing another Pikmin type. We can have a full party of them right away to turn in the two treasures we started moving before, and once they're turned in adjacent, enter the next Andori battle. After that, my plan is to pick up all nearby treasure before jumping into the next cave. The captain will take blue Pikmin to pick up some treasure and water before throwing some blue at a specific angle to get them up a slope you usually need yellow Pikmin for. Then he'll run to the cave while Ochi moves our base, picks up some surface treasures, and destroys a wall while they're being turned in for faster pathing later. Once that's all in, we're good to enter the engulfed castle. Nothing much to report here, except I think it's kind of interesting that we entirely avoid the gimmick of the non-existent entity spawning after being on a sub-level for long enough, since we are not on a sub-level long enough. Honestly, kind of a shame since this is one of my favorite caves in the game, but at least it's funny. I did make a slight mistake where I didn't notice the Pikmin die right before going to the next sub-level, so I'll be one short for a section later. But it's not a big deal. You know, unless I'm like, one second off from winning again. After we beat the boss by stunlocking it, we can exit the cave the unintended way to enter it 9 more times to grind purple Pikmin. This is why we needed so many blues, since they're the only type you can bring in this cave. Ochi's pluck upgrade also comes in handy here, since we can split up to pluck both flowers at once. After getting a hundred for a specific treasure later, exit the intended way. Make sure to leave while playing as the captain. This is due to a very minor optimization where if you're playing as Ochi when exiting a cave, 
Once you're on the surface, the captain will always be riding him, and I want him on the ground when I exit so he doesn't have to spend time jumping off. This kind of thing only saves a second. Surely a second wouldn't make much more- <laughs> I'm so salty about this. Is this too much salt to put this many jokes about the losing by a second? No. We'll split up here so Ochi can clear some obstacles to prepare for when we exit the Dandori challenge. The captain will disband all but Purple Pikmin while Ochi takes white and yellow. Purple Pikmin get their strength showcased immediately. They do like a million damage when being thrown, have 10 strength so you often only need one or two of them to pick up treasure, and they're slow. Okay, hear me out. If any other Pikmin type to pick up the stately rubber cutie, they would move faster, causing them to run down this ledge, since before the bag gets pushed down, it was the most efficient path to the ship. I don't want to spend time running back to it, so I throw a slow purple Pikmin who starts moving the long way, but just before he falls, the bag does and he turns around. Ochi also opens an earthwind thingy, kills a dweevil protecting treasure, and throws some white Pikmin to put the stately rubber cutie in a better spot for later. Once the purple Pikmin dig up some buried treasure, the captain enters the Dandori challenge. After we're done with that, we'll use 57 white Pikmin to quickly carry everything back to the ship, and 3 blue Pikmin to throw so the captain and Ochi can split up from here to get most of the remaining overworld treasure. Ochi will swim with his doggy paddle level 2 for extra swimming speed, and throw an ice blast since it can freeze hydro jelly and quickly. So use one here while the captain runs to 20 gold nuggets. He can charge the 20 white Pikmin remaining at it and run back to the ship while the 3 blue Pikmin start chipping away at the frozen jelly. Once the captain is back, he can whistle the Pikmin who just turned things in, and swap them for 31 blue Pikmin to go with him in the water. Ochi will take 10 purple and a combination of white and blue Pikmin. Use them to collect the other pile of gold nuggets while telling him to go near the Crimson Banquet. Make sure not to get too close since an armored cannon larva is protecting it, and Ochi will aggro it or try to fight it himself if too close, resulting in Pikmin deaths. After the captain deals with puckering Blinos by actually using the next feature while locking on, he shouldn't lose a single Pikmin to pick up the two nearby treasures and start moving to the enemy infested water with just nine Pikmin remaining. Ochi should meanwhile be using another ice bomb to break Hydro Jelly and throw just the 10 purple Pikmin at the Crimson Banquet so he can make his way back to the ship. The captain can easily kill the Toady Bloister and make his way to the four puckering Blinos. These guys actually cause the most deaths and rewinds out of any enemy of the challenge so far. That's mostly due to having such a small party right now. Sometimes blue Pikmin will actually home in on them, and if they do, you should be good. But if they just don't feel like it, it's chaos hoping you can save the one being eaten, only for the rescuer to be eaten as well. Honestly, I don't have much of a strategy other than trying to get one separated from the rest, since a 9v3 is much easier. With 9 Pikmin, we'll have to 2 cycle the pearly clamp clamp, but once it's dead, we finally get another far lick. By the time this drops, the Zest Bomb should be turned in so Ochi can whistle the now idle Pikmin and make his way to the corner of the map. During my last attempt, I saved this area for after leaving the Dandori challenge, since I initially used this time with Ochi to get the Foolish Fruit. But since I got that earlier, I can do this long area instead, which is much more efficient. While he's running there, the captain baits the Pricklepuff into attacking so the Pikmin can flank him. Ochi's main objective is to move the Neutilite shell close to the base, so start digging that up as soon as possible, and have him move to the top and use two bombs on the Pearly Clamp Clamp since it would take way too many cycles with how few Pikmin Ochi has with him. Throw the remaining ones at Treasure while the captain 4v3s Puckering Blinos with the same strategy as before. We don't need to wait for Ochi's treasures to be turned in just yet since we'll have to wait for the treasures near the captain to be turned in after the Dandori challenge, so once the Farlick is turned in, enter the cave. 
After winning, we can only select blue Pikmin, which is why I wanted 70 instead of 69, but at least it's funny. I'll divide my Pikmin up in ways where they speed up the objects just enough to get them to the ship as fast as possible, while also turning in the other nearby treasures. Once the first couple go in, I can speed up the rest with the charging horn and have Ochi waiting at the cave entrance for the blue sparkles. And my sanity is very happy to report that this attempt was faster than the last one and by a decent margin, meaning I didn't even need items to speed up the crusted rump up kill. I still play optimally to make sure I can finish everything in time, since I wasn't feeling like doing this entire area again for some reason. So I get the gold nuggets and move the blue onion very close to the ship before jumping into below grade disc attack right before the countdown, meaning I can take this entire cave slowly and just collect everything the first and only time I enter. All I have to do during the countdown is turn in the blue onion, an enemy, and pellet for that sweet sweet 100% completion. Yeah, unfortunately you can only cure the pilot after your third night mission if you have the three purple leaflings from Dandori Battles. After the second night mission, you can now pick which area and level you want to do, and you get a cutscene where Dingo tells Yanni to cure the one he knew was Bernard the whole dang time. Why didn't you say something before? Now my challenge run isn't as op- I mean, Bernard was suffering the whole time. This leaves the only noteworthy thing about Night Expeditions being that we aim to get 20 Glow Pikmin Seeds by having 100 Glow Pikmin with us when the expeditions end. Oh, and hey, for the third night mission, we can pick one with two Luminals for more Pup Drive. Hero's Hideaway is honestly a lot easier than Serene Shores. The route I take focuses on completely clearing the first half of the house before the afternoon. After picking up the first two treasures, I'll kill Moss so she doesn't whistle any of my Pikmin away. We'll also kill a lot of other enemies on our path too. Send the white Pikmin to build a large wall and have the remaining pick up other nearby treasures with the captain while Ochi Idlers alerts some Pikmin to him for the Horned Cannon Beetle. It'll take two cycles to kill it and give the captain time to meet up at this area to disband all but eight purple Pikmin so he can get the treasures on the couches. While he does that, Ochi will get the last grounded treasure on this side of the map and take the platform up to the counter using a single purple Pikmin to carry the Unbreakable Promise. After killing the enemies in the way, we brought yellow Pikmin to dig up the path back down for Pikmin to carry things through. We'll grab all treasure up here now with the help of purple Pikmin since it would take a lot more time to do so later. Ochi can just jump down and whistle the yellows once they're done digging and take them to the final treasure we'll be collecting before the captain enters a cave. While we wait for everything to be turned in, we can actually open the safe even without all of the cards. This is because the code doesn't change when you rewind, so just bring some Pikmin with Ochi to guess the code with the omniscient power of cheating. All we do after the doppelganger's den is run to the Dandori battle. While turning in Almar, we'll throw Pikmin on the rail to get the next card so we can finally know the password to the safe and send the captain to the next entrance while Ochi gets the last treasure on the ground. We have to be careful here since if we throw Pikmin at the treasures right away, they'll carry them down the steps and can't be brought back up in a time efficient manner. Wait to carry them until the enemies are dealt with and hurry to the last base location where we'll have to quickly kill the shear fleas to turn the Pikmin around at the last second. While they're making their way to the base, move the box for later and enter the cave once the treasures are turned in. 
I tested how much time I would have left after completing Hero's Hideaway, so I spent about a tick of the clock grinding 20 raw materials on Frozen Inferno sub-level 1 thanks to an iridescent flint beetle. After getting a ton of raw materials, I just need to temporarily split up from Ochi to get on the kitchen's island and throw Pikmin at treasures while the Porkwillin tries his best. I get the last overworld treasure on my way to the next Dandori challenge and enter once everything's turned in. I've actually been grinding one raw material every 7 minutes for a couple of days while I've been writing this script. Huh, I don't have anything else written. I don't know what to do. So I guess the video's just like over now. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did maybe like, comment, and subscribe. Oh wait, no, I could just write more. All that I have left to do in this area is pick up a few treasures and creatures as I make my way to the final cave before the countdown, and once done, turn in some pellets even though I have over a hundred of all Pikmin types with an onion. I once again do a double luminal night expedition for some extra pup drive, and I've gotta say, getting used to constantly switching between characters makes these a lot easier. I remember having trouble with this one on my casual playthrough with a fully upgraded Ochi, but this time I can get all pellets easily, even these five way off in the distance for some reason. Now, we can see the results screen where the total playtime is only about 7 real life days, so the night expeditions actually made this playthrough take less real days than in-game ones. Keep in mind that most of the playtime is from raw material AFK farming, but I also spent a lot of time on Area 3 on files I had to overwrite to start over many times. I think the minimum days required if you aren't going for 100% completion is 9, since you could only pick up necessary leaflings for progression, and do a double luminal mission to keep a key ready for Olimar before you rescue him, but that's not as fun as taking Dandori to the extreme, right? Thanks for watching. I'm planning on doing the post-game areas in another video, and I'll also find the minimum days for completing everything else, like all night expeditions, side quests, and other bonus content, so consider liking the video so I know people want to see that, and subscribing so you don't miss it.